Live from Washington, D.C., it's theCUBE, covering AWS Public Sector Summit 2017. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services and its partner ecosystem. Well, welcome back here on theCUBE as we continue our coverage of the AWS Public Sector Summit 2017. Along with John Furrier, I'm John Walls. We're in the Walter Washington Convention Center uh, for the, uh, the sixth show of almost 10,000 attendees. Somewhere in that ballpark, it's come a long way in a very short period of time, so AWS uh, has a lot, I think, uh, to, to feel good about. A lot it's of a kudos. new reinvent for public sector. It's yeah. huge. Yeah, and, and not just, we think about government, but we think about uh, education as well. We've had a couple of segments about that. We are going to talk about government, though, with our next guest. And if we get a name wrong on this segment, Shame on us. John Stevenson with John Walls and John Furrier. Uh, John's the senior He's manager. He's by JC though, we have yeah, to call him. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, public policy at, uh, at AWS. John, nice to have you with us, we appreciate that. Thank Thanks you for having for, me. for the time. Um, so you're focused primarily state and local governments, um, and then what exactly as the conduit of what in terms of what you want to bring to their table from AWS? Well, I'm a senior manager of public policy for Amazon Web Services in the Eastern United States. I handle state and local government relations uh, in the Eastern US from Texas to Maine and then south to Florida. Uh, I help uh, our business uh, and also our partners in government understand how public policy can enable cloud and modern technologies. Uh, it's a very exciting place to be because there's a lot going on in state and local government when it comes to IT modernization and cloud right now. You know, I, I think about government too. I think there's that big umbrella we could put all in. Well, government, it's you know, public service. Uh, but federal government, I think, has a place. And in state and local, I think, uh, much more responsive, much more grassroots. Um, and so those applications are much more immediate. I would think, and, and, and so does that come into play with you that you need to be a little more nimble or you're helping your clients, if you will, be a little more nimble or more agile? Absolutely, if you look at what state and local governments are doing, essential services from delivery of healthcare to uh, taking out the trash, providing public safety, uh, providing education, it's handled at the state and local government. And if you look at the number of times you touch government, uh, it is state and local. Think about renewing a driver's license. Think about paying a parking ticket. Think about getting a zoning permit for a mod, uh, remodeling of your house. You're dealing with state and local government. The demands on state and local government are also higher. They're holding uh, more data on citizens than the federal government. They ha are undergoing massive population changes, either positive or negative. So uh, state and local government, uh, which also have budget constraints, need to be more nimble, more innovative. Uh, they're natural early adopters and first movers of technology, and if you look at some of the more exciting things about technology that are happening in the government space, I think it's happening at state and local government in the U.S. Yeah, and Smart Cities, by the way, is the hottest trend. Intel, one of the key sponsors of this show, and we had two, two folks on here. AI is really going to be a nice gateway for some of these innovations on their side. They, they have 5G opportunities, network transformation, a lot of technology going on under the covers, under the hood, if you will. One of them is smart cities, and that is something that is just mind-blowing, just from a technology standpoint, but even more mind-blowing from a policy perspective. Who sets the rules? What side does the car run on? What digital services are citizens going to get? Who pays for them? What does the government do? What does the private sector do? These are issues that need to be grappled with. Your thoughts on how you guys look at that and, and how are your constituents engaging with that and thinking about it? Well, I'm glad you mentioned smart cities because there's a lot of activity going on in that space. If you look at uh, Internet of Things technologies alone, uh, one of the enablers of smart cities, uh, as many as 53% of uh, state and local governments, according to NASIO, are, uh, are looking at these technologies or deploying them. So it, it's great to see that because that'll enable a lot of potential from smarter government services, better government services, improving service delivery, and uh, improving uh, constituent fulfillment, which resonates with us as part of Amazon. Uh, we're uh, all about customer fulfilling uh, fulfillment and delighting our customers with yeah, new products prices and services. And del ship things faster. That's Bezos' ethos. That's Amazon's culture. Exactly. And you can deliver services, any digital services. Everything we do starts with the customer and we work backwards. And in the conversations I've had with policymakers at the state and local government, they see smart cities as a way to do that. Yeah. Uh, everything from improving transportation in places like uh, Columbus, Ohio, to improving connectivity and uh, engagement with the internet in places like Kansas City, uh, Missouri, 
uh, and uh, new ways of delivering services in places like New York and Los Angeles. It's very exciting stuff. Where policymakers are coming to us uh, and others in the industry about are what are the policies, what are the best practices that can enable these technologies. And so we've been working with them, uh, providing uh, information on what we're seeing around the world, how open data uh, can be made enable, how security and compliance can be built into applications. And we're happy to provide that because we, we, we know from working uh, in the cloud ourselves uh, the potential that's there for state and local government. Yeah, you want to foster innovation at the same time. You don't want to create just a restrictive environment or have legacy be the baggage that holds things back. In fact, if you look at some of the best smart cities implementations, it's Singapore, it's Dubai, it's areas all over the world that in some cases didn't have really strong infrastructure. So now come back to your, your role as you look at the US which has great infrastructure, except for broadband connectivity, we do faster, but they have some pre-existing <laughs> conditions. So they're under pressure. The cloud is a perfect vehicle for them because they can come in with their existing stuff, get apps and services online quicker. How are you dealing with the, the challenge of, okay, calm down, they're not going to take over the world, you know, Skynet's not coming, you know, Terminator reference, as always, but you know, that's a concern. Privacy, a lot of policy issues to be dealt with. How do you, how do you handle those? Well, I think it, with any policy issue, and I've, I've been in public policy for a while now, it, it really starts with education. Understanding in very simple, layman's terms, what the cloud is and what it is yeah. not. Uh, it is a very transformative technology. It is not an end-all, one-size-fits-all technology. So what we've done is help educate policymakers by understanding the potential of uh, cloud, uh, what it can do in terms of cost savings, improve security, uh, and being more agile. And to tell that story, you know, we're, we're not you know, just using, we're, we don't use PowerPoints at Amazon. Uh, we're not coming in and giving PowerPoint presentations, although I have- It's good I, old pound, <laughs> flash pounding, handshakes, and hitting the streets. Well, more importantly, it's sharing the customer's stories. Yes. We're talking with them about what's happening at the New York City Department of Transportation. We're talking with them about what's happening uh, at the city of Los Angeles with their emergency operations center, about how uh, cities uh, are using cloud technologies to deliver far superior products and services faster. Uh, well, I mean, hit on some of those. I mean, tell us, so what is New York doing? And what is LA doing specifically? There? So New York City, they have their iRide application to help citizens get from one point to the other uh, much more quickly and safely as part of their Vision Zero campaign. Uh, anyone who's been in New York, and I've been in New York quite, quite a few times, knows that traffic can be a real uh, pain in, uh, getting from one part of Manhattan to the other. So what iRide does is it helps people navigate Manhattan and the other boroughs much more quickly and efficiently using all the modes of transportation available to them. The city of New York is able to deploy that much more quickly uh, to many more people. They're able to update it, keep it secure, thanks to cloud technology offered by AWS. Okay. City of Los Angeles, uh, they face cyber attacks every day. <laughs> then there are the huge costs uh, of maintaining that security. Uh, but with cloud, they're able to uh, build out event management systems and uh, integrate those with their Homeland Security te technologies and practices, and they're able to do it for a fraction of the cost using uh, traditional systems, traditional IT, and traditional practices. It's very exciting. Yeah. Suddenly local government can move with the speed and agility of a startup, uh, which has made Amazon very innovative. Uh, when uh, last year we launched over a thousand new services and features. Uh, so, local, state and local governments are seeing that, they want to be more like us and others in the industry that are using cloud to deliver new products and services and be better at their jobs. And the education, I'd also add probably patience in the <laughs> educational role. Yeah, I mean, you think about just the civil liberties of the, of the citizens. That's really job one, because I think most people would get spooked, whoa, all the surveillance. But you think about it, I was just watching Patriot's Day with my family, you know, the Boston bombing, Boston Strong, with Mark uh, Wahlberg. You know, this things actually happen all the time and we take for granted some of the things that we have in the, in the surveillance community for the kinds of data that's out there. At the same time, that's the balance. You know, can you bring me value with, with my liberties? So it's all the same, it's the same compliance game, same mm -hmm. governance game, yep. this, is, this, is the, this is the public sector. Well, that's where I think cloud has a great story to tell. So with cloud, you get uh, the benefits of economies of scale, of Amazon with security, and also with privacy. Uh, we have multiple compliance frameworks, everything from HIPAA, FERPA, CGIS, criminal justice information systems, 
Uh, we are zealous guardians of security and our customers' privacy. We don't look at data, we don't share data without customers' permission. We have very strong safeguards. And that's why if you look at the, the customer base of Amazon from banks to government agencies, healthcare companies, uh, even uh, companies like Netflix, and you would think they're a competitor of ours, they're running their uh, IT in AWS. They trust us. Uh, even though with Amazon Video and Amazon Prime, you would think they're a competitor, but they've put that level of trust in us and our systems and our practices that they, are, they can put their data there. And we're hearing it from customers after customer that they feel more safer and more secure uh, with their data in the cloud offered by AWS. And we've, we've uh, shared that with government officials and they have take great comfort uh, in those statements. You, you hit on something earlier when you said that state governments or local governments have more data at their disposal than the federal government has uh, about their, their consumers, if you will, in quotation marks. Um, because of that, um, how much higher do you find their concerns to be in terms of you know, cybersecurity, in terms of uh, uh, hack-proof, uh, secure networks and systems, as opposed to what might happen at the federal level? Because we think federal, right? We think big about what happened with uh, 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 through the, uh, the, the U.S. government's uh, the payment systems, right, um, last year. OPM, uh, but you say state, local, they've got a lot more uh, data they're protecting. Well, I've, I've had a great opportunity in my current job to talk with a lot of IT officials and policy makers in the states, and oftentimes uh, a meeting will start and they'll say, you know, I've read about this, I've heard about this, and we're often able to say, that's not an issue with the cloud offered by AWS, or that's something we've already addressed uh, through our security and compliance frameworks. Uh, so for example, uh, I was in one meeting and uh, a state policymaker asked me, well, what do you do about HIPAA compliance? We have HIPAA compliance uh, in AWS. And then he, he tried to ask uh, questions, well, what about this, what about that? And each time, uh, our team was able to tell the state policymaker, we meet that, we exceed that, we, we actually helped write the standard for that compliance framework. So what we've been able to uh, show that policymaker and others is that the cloud just offers a far superior security posture than what they can do on their own. It's taken some time uh, because the cloud is new uh, and it's still, as we like to say, it's still day one uh, in this field. And, but we, we are very confident that as the word gets out, uh, more and more people will be trusting, particularly in state government, their data to the cloud because of the superiority it offers on so many different levels. Well, certainly the word's getting out. This, is, this event here is just as big as it's ever been. It's like I almost reinvent now. It used to be a little summit. Now it's grown, there's a lot of interest. So it, It's very it. exciting uh, for me. I've been to reinvent now twice. And uh, this is uh, just so delightful to see so many people from government, uh, from the U.S., from internationally here to learn about the cloud, share their story. It's really inspirational to see what's, what's possible. And it's a testament to Teresa Carlson who was just you know, years ago knocking on doors. No one, that was before cloud was cloud and now it's such come a long way. Congratulations to the whole team. Thank you. Yeah. It's, uh, it, it's really delightful to see, and I uh, can't wait to see what's in store for next year and after that. Yeah, we still got a little bit to go here though, John. Don't kick us out <laughs> quite yet. Yeah. John Stevenson, uh, Public Policy at AWS. Thanks for being with us, we appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, with John Furrier, I'm John Walls, and we'll be back with more here on theCUBE from Washington, D.C., right after this. <laughs>